I like the idea of having this. is the first here. time we've done the show with music playing. I like that. this. It adds dynamic. Is that what it adds? Hey, we're going. Are we going? What's happening, everybody? This is the Nate and Joe show. We are superiorphantom.com. I am Nate. This is my partner, Joe. That was a pretty good intro. I'm excited about today. What's up, Jarrett? Hey. Jarrett's over here. Uh, being creative. Being creative and pushing buttons and shit. We're live from the down and out. Yes, Fifth indeed. Spring, downtown Los Angeles. There's nobody here. Drinking beer with Guillermo. G. At the bar. Dude, it's basketball The season. Mexican Elvis. I'm fired up about basketball season. Yeah. It's uh, the season, well, depending on who, who you're into, has started off pretty fun. We'll depending on, where, depending on where your loyalties lie. We'll, we'll talk about the Lakers later. I think the Clippers have problems still. Yeah. But um, the NBA at this point is pretty much the Spurs and everybody else still, right? I think that's a pretty fair assessment, yeah. That's, uh, you know, last year at this time I was, I was uh, and I'll, I'll eat a little crow right now, I was a non-believer in the Spurs. I, I kind of, I was like, I said they were too old. I was one of those, one of those guys saying they were too old and, it couldn't get. There's no way they could get it done again. This team had to had to blow up. And, and after seeing the run they went on last year, I, I just I can't. I'm a believer. I can't. Uh, <laughs> I can't say that anymore. I just there's such a calmness about that team. That, yeah. That just you know what I mean. Like you you're not gonna you're not gonna fuck with them. Like They're the they, ice men, dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, literally, they they really are. Like, and Kawhi Leonard is working his way into being a superstar, which. I mean, I, I don't know if any of us really expected that, but it's just, it's really cool to see that guy develop, you know, like he's been a, He's been kind of a beast for him. He's, uh, they, they can trust him in the paint. They can trust him uh, taking a pull-up jumper. Like he's, yeah, he's been, he's been very good. You know, I, I go to the back-to-back they had earlier this week with, uh, at first they played the Clippers and then they moved on to Golden State. That Clipper game, the Clippers dominated the entire game and then the fourth quarter the Spurs just decided they wanted to win the game and it was over it was just it, like it, it was that, that didn't make any sense like I don't know either that speaks volumes at the holes that are in the Clippers or just how good the Spurs really are the Spurs are awesome at the, running the high post with Tim Duncan yeah that's just, that's what the result is when you have uh, you know one of the greatest players of our generation yeah um, I can't argue with that. You know, in the in the twilight of his career, trying to go for one last hurrah with his buddies, they you know what I mean? They yeah. they step up. But what was what was cool about that game was they they executed they executed that entire game, and they just missed a lot of shots. You know what I mean? And sometimes that happens, but they didn't they didn't flip out in any way. They they stayed within themselves. They stayed true to their plan, and they, and they pulled it out in the end. And, and you know, they they took advantage of some obvious weaknesses in the Clippers and their wing defense, as well as uh, you know, I, I think I think that Blake and DeAndre thing that the Clippers are doing, like originally you think that they were going to be really good on the defensive end just because of their athleticism. Well, Blake is and, and playing. Who they were coached by, but. It, it just hasn't turned up, and, and I don't, I don't think you can, I don't think you can win, especially in today's Western Conference, without being able to stop teams. Blake isn't really playing like Blake has played uh, his entire career in the NBA, which is yes, granted, it's been a short career, but he's 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 pulling up a lot more and dishing the ball a lot more. Like his, whenever he goes strong to the bucket in like a freight train that no one can really get in the way of that's when the Clippers succeed. And he hasn't been doing that at all this year. I don't know if it's because he slapped some dude in Vegas and that's been on his mind. I mean, who, who, who knows? But, I mean, he has not been playing like the Blake Griffin that Clipper fans have come to know and love. Just what, what I think it is, and, again, this is just one man's opinion. I have no inside knowledge of this of any way. But, but I think he's just, he's just kind of tired of getting fouled. And, and the Western Conference kind of broke You can't it. be tired of and, getting fouled. It's the NBA, for fuck's sake. Yeah, Joe, that doesn't make sense. Uh, can't, I mean, no, what, you, I mean what, you're getting tired of going did, to the line. Okay. If you're tired of getting Having, fouled in the NBA, you retire. I mean, you can't you can't decide you you want to shoot more. You, you know, if if your strength is going to the bucket and just muscling guys out of your way, you're gonna get fouled. That's I mean, he's been getting fouled his whole career in college when he played for Oklahoma. He used to get raped. But I mean, it's like that's just 
That's yeah. the only way guys can defend him. Look, you're right. I mean, I, I think we're I think we're saying the same thing here. But if you're an athlete with the, with the sheer talent and ability that Blake Griffin has, um, playing with with one of the best distributing point guards in the NBA, in in Chris Paul, um, what what else? What else can stop you from going to the rim except for the fact that you don't want to go to the rim? Well, no, you know I, you, I mean? yeah. and I, I think that's a fucking problem. Like you're, you're right. Well, no, it's, it's a huge problem. That's it, why they're. It's, it's absolutely a problem, but but I, you know, I don't think, I, with the exception of Demarcus Cousins, I don't think there's anybody in the league. Well, maybe maybe Mark Gasol and some of the guys on Memphis, but I, I don't think there's anybody in the league that can one on one. Stop him from getting to the rim, and I, I, I just think uh, yeah, that if right. he's taking pull up seventeen footers, like that's that's on him. That's nobody playing defense. Yeah, no, I agree with you. That's a personal decision. You know what <laughs> I mean? And speaking of big men, the the other team that I think warrants a little bit of conversation from us is uh, the Warriors, and I wanted to get your thoughts on uh, Steve Kerr and Bogut <coughs> and what's going on in Golden State because. I think everybody thought they were good, but I don't think anybody thought they would be this good. Well, they've got one of the best shooting point guards in, I mean, hell, in NBA history at this point. Although his numbers, are, he hasn't been around long enough to, to warrant that, but everyone who likes and knows basketball knows that Steph Curry is just, I mean, that dude's... His, his release on the ball and from anywhere on the court is so quick and he's so hard to defend because he's so good at controlling the ball and so good at dishing the ball. It, I mean, and then he's got another point guard coaching him and Steve Kerr. I think that they are, I mean, they're phenomenal. They just, just watching them play basketball has been, it, 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 it's, I still don't think they get by the Spurs, but they're really good. It's going to be a fun, fun playoff run to watch when, when the Golden State Warriors and the, and the San Antonio Spurs meet up. Justin, it's do happen. you have any thoughts on the dubs? Do you have any thoughts on the dubs? On the Warriors? The Golden State Warriors, how, how my friend. How good do you think the Warriors are in the first two weeks first of, of all, basketball? First of all, friends, you know, I've, this just, is... I've just read up on them a little bit, but I've known that the Warriors got the right coach for the past couple of years that they were going to be hot. Yeah, it, it's true. Do you and think Kerr is, Kerr is coaching them up. Do you think do you think Steve Kerr is really the right coach? Because here, I, I'm going to point some things out. Steph Curry has been their best defensive player the first two weeks of the basketball season. Okay. And, I, I mean, you could say that is maybe there's a lot of upside there. But, I don't know, when Steph Curry is your best defensive player, I, I think that's more of a problem. You know, and... and the, the other thing that What's their record right now? How many what are they they're, uh, have they lost two? I think five and five and two. Five and two, right? Yeah, okay. Five and two. Okay. But but I, I just I don't think I don't think that I I don't know, if Steph Curry's your best defensive player, like that's that's definitely a weak point and a point in contention. The other thing too that I'll notice is like sure they've got a good guy in Steve Kerr to be coaching the Splash Brothers. And I don't think there's any guy that's more well fit to do that. But on the second night of a back-to-back -back against the Spurs, Steph Curry went 0 for 6 from 3. No, and I saw that. When when you have a when you have a, a prolific scorer like Steph Curry, and he gets held out from the line for the first time in in a season and a half. I was going to say he had a he had a, a, that's a red flag, isn't it? A very large streak going on when that happened. Yeah. I think they're about ten games away from catching fire. They're I mean they're a phenomenal. I think their backcourt is ridiculous. I think they just look amazing, and I think Andrew Bogut's going to turn out to be a much more effective player than he's shown early this season. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jesse Malloy. <laughs> that's Jesse. What's up, Jesse? He's, he's a good basketball mind. We keep I like him around. It. So um. I don't know. Can we talk about the Kings? Yeah, get after uh, your Kings. Um, I'm. How'd they do against Dallas the other night? Huh? 
Then they shit the bed. <laughs> then they got up. They got up 32 to 14, and then they got Dirk. But we'll talk about. So Joe over Dirk. here, while he he's. Oh yeah, tell him about the bet. Joe's br- the Joe's since we brought the Kings. Joe over here, honestly, in, in his in, I made a in his heart bet. in his heart of hearts, believes that the Kings, the Sat Town Kings, are going to have no this 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 man over here, this genius over here, is going to win. An NBA title before the Los Angeles Doyers win wow. a World Series. And he bet me five to one on a hundred dollar bet, and I gave it to him. I was like, absolutely. <laughs> nice. That that would happen. Nice, Joe. Joe, you broke the first <laughs> commandment, dude. Well, <laughs> that's 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 ballsy. Wow. It's ballsy. <laughs> yeah. Broke I mean, the first commandment. Hell, if he, and I, and I, I and might I, have and I see what, I might have taken I ten to see one. see where you're coming from. <laughs> I might have taken ten to one. But he 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 lowballed it and said five to one. You know. That's like a that's like such a that's such a that's such a deep bet. <laughs> that's the deepest bet I've ever heard. It's pretty good. Yeah. So so here, like let me let me set the stage for that bet. I made that bet after I went to the Kings Clippers game in person uh, last weekend or the weekend before, whatever it was. And I saw Demarcus Cousins put up thirty eight and seventeen. And he out-rebounded Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan combined. And I, I just... Which means they're going to win an NBA title this year? No, no, no not at all. But, but I think <laughs> yeah. No, Marcus Cousins might be, like, yeah, clearly the best big man in the league be, within the next well, few years. Well, no, that's... Uh, Is that possible. what you're saying? He, he could be, but I'll, I'll tell you this. And, and I've been through this before. This Sacramento Kings team, to me, reminds me of 1994. When they first started getting good... When the team very first made the playoffs, and there was a couple pieces in place, and like Gary St. Jean was coaching them, it was before Rick Adelman got involved, and then put the high post offense in, and they became what they became. But you see the pieces. The arena's getting built. We've got an owner. But when are uh, they going to Seattle? Vivek. No, that's the thing. We've got <laughs> we've got the owner. We've that that everybody thinks. Is completely nuts, and like he really is. But okay. that's the beauty of it. Like, you have to realize the Kings are coming off an ownership previous with the Maloose, where they got sunshine blown up their ass, and everything is about char- charisma and flash. And this Kings team and this owner, it's not about that. This owner has no flash. Who's coaching the Kings? Huh? Who's Mike coach- Malone? Malone. He was a player? Huh? He was a player? He was the top defensive assistant for Mark Jackson at the Warriors. Okay, well. Yeah, like Whatever. I said, <laughs> Defense, yeah. that, Except, thank you, Jesse. I agree with you. No, like that guy, that guy, that guy could end up. Uh, okay. That guy could end up. <laughs> hey, hey DeMar- did they put DeMarcus Cousins playing at center? Yeah. Dude. Yeah, I, I just. <laughs> I, like the well, I think they could be really good, but we're they're like, probably gonna need. They're gonna need to some somehow pieces. get like like yeah. some unique leadership. They need, probably they, not uh-huh. they need to go get a guy like Wesley Matthews from Portland out of free agency this year and make a move. And like, look. What and, they should do is they they should pick up a contract like Kobe Bryant, who can motivate guys to to win oh, titles. Oh, they should pick his contract. And he, he, he could lead them to their. To the first NBA that's title. that's what we did. That's what is going. I'm not on. sure what you're saying. What are you saying? That's currently what's going on with Rudy Gay. And I mean, well, so yeah, far you know. with what they got, Rudy, they got Rudy Gay too. Yeah. They got Rudy Gay well, yeah, 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 no, no, two no, years no, ago. No, no. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I just and, and the cool thing that I like. What's, what's their record? Huh? What's their record? Five and three. They lost three. Yeah. yeah and yeah. and they've beaten they've beaten Portland, the Clippers. Phoenix on the road, That's and they've amazing. lost to Golden State, Dallas, and uh, who was the other one? And uh, and Oklahoma City was the other loss. OKC's got problems. I, mean, I don't know, dude. We've just played. It, it's been a really tough schedule, and I, and I don't think I don't have visions of grandeur this year, or however you say that. But I just think the pieces are in place. And I really love that the first hire was Pete D'Alessandro straight out of the San Antonio Spurs tree. Like, I, th- I, think, I think there's just a cool, 
little bubble going up. What why doesn't Why doesn't Kevin Johnson just go play for the Kings? Why, do, dude? If it were up to me, Kevin Johnson would be playing point guard. <laughs> <laughs> that would get in the way of politics. I think Kevin Johnson's going to be the governor. It, it's very possible. Oh, yeah. cool. It's very possible. Cool. I think I think he might have bigger fish to fry. Yeah. But uh, before He's we got to pump up Sacramento. Before we get <laughs> off the uh, the NBA, we got to talk about some historical records. And the first one that I want to talk about is Dirk passing Hakeem and being the leading foreign-born scorer. And it's not it's not NBA only history. just passing Hakeem. He's also what the eighth. Leading eighth or ninth uh, right. leading scorer in, 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 in NBA history, so it's yeah. not. And yes, he he is the all-time foreign leading and scorer. And he's scored yeah. the most points of any foreign-born player. Yeah, which is phenomenal. Yeah, and I and I don't. I mean, I love Dirk. Ever since he came into the NBA, I think I've always said I think he's one of the the hardest big men, arguably in history, to guard because he can. He's a seven-footer who can shoot a three-point uh, rainbow on you, what do you and got, Jay? nail it every time. It also speaks a lot to uh, David Stern's influence on bringing the uh, not, uh, not just the NBA but basketball, the game of basketball, to the rest of the world. And yeah, a- absolutely. Mm-hmm. I think I think without Dirk Nowitzki, um, you know what I mean, and, and guys like Pesu Stoyakovic and and Vlade Divac and and many of the Western Sub- European bonus. guys. Like don't don't come over without Dirk, you know what I mean? And, and I, you never you never really hear any. any How long has Dirk uh, been in the uh, been in the league? Maybe nine years now. It's know. been at least eleven or twelve years. I think nineties. Like Does ninety nine sound right? Has it been that long? Has it been like? It's been a long time. Wow. I should have looked that up, but it's been a long time. And yeah, you know, I think it's closer to 15. I think I think it's like 14 or 15 years. And the other thing, too, about Dirk that I think is cool is he was the best player on the Mavs team. And, and the Mavs were obviously ran by Mark Cuban, who was one of the most, um, you know, polarizing, uh, transcending figures in sports. And like Dirk, He's died off a little bit, and, but he still Dirk, might. He still is. No, real and, and Dirk kind of gave that team legs. And he, you know what I mean, without... Without guys like Mark Cuban coming over from the dot com world and, and into that, like does does Steve Ballmer come in and buy the Clippers if he doesn't for see two billion dollars? They they, right. they 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 fucking Mark Cuban had, you know what I mean? There there's all kinds of stuff there, and, and I think Dirk just gave so many legs to the game on so many different angles, <laughs> and like you never really hear you never really hear any fucked up shit about Dirk either. Like Dirk is very like go to the game you know what I mean like he, he's just a good dude yeah like in, in a, never, in, never any off court issues in a time never, where there's you know. not very many good dudes like Dirk is good dude like I, I don't know I just I support them <laughs> and, and he, he credits his high, high you know all time scoring or not all time but uh, all time foreign born scoring leadership yeah. now uh, to trying to implement his own version uh, his own white version of the dream shake <laughs> Yeah, like he, no, totally. I mean, he did too. Like that that little seventeen foot, like one footed, like fadeaway jump shot. Like, Andy, me, you tell me how you're gonna stop. He, that. Yeah, he calls and it, the guy he, he passed, Akeem Olajuwon, for God's sake, is considered one of the you know one of the best players in NBA history. And I mean, I loved him. I loved watching Akeem play whenever he, when, you know whenever he was in the NBA. Yo, and Akeem Olajuwon. Was the goalie for Nigeria, for God's sakes, for... Uh, Whoa, really? Yeah. For, for, and, and he played in the World Cup for Nigeria. And like, one, one more thing on Dirk, and then we'll talk about Kobe and move on to other shit. But, but the other thing you got to realize, too, about Dirk is, like, if he didn't invent the stretch four, like, if he didn't invent that position, he was definitely, like, the first guy to bring that to the game. And that, well... I mean, I mean, what there, about there, Rashid there Wallace? Were, there were certainly people before him, but I mean, again, he was a transcendent player in that, um, you know, in that process, if you will, in that evolution of the game. Like, I don't know. Maybe that's not important to people, but I think. No, it's. it's all right. All right, let's talk about the Lakers. We got to talk about the Lakers. That's a shit show. Or lack thereof. Have they won um, the game yet? What's up, what's up, Jared? Have they won a game yet? Yeah, yes. they got one. Oh. Yes, oh. they Jesse, did. Hey. Are you going to hey. beat me up if I go bad on the Lakers organization right now? 
<laughs> Jesse says no, of course not, which means... His voice says no, his eyes say <laughs> yes, Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah right? So, I don't know. So Kobe has the, the uh, all-time shots missed record now? Yes, and, and, and which, which, you know, okay, let's put this into perspective. He... The dude's been in the league for 19 years. Yeah, dude. Guys have, he has, probably has the most mileage on his legs. He's got anybody. five rings. He's always, you know, uh, he's taking the last shot. He's ta- I mean, hell, he's with the last two games, he took 26 shots and 28 shots but, uh, in both those games. And that's not he, talking he, about it at all for the rest of the, rest, you know, the he, shots he's taking for the rest of his career. He's up in Iverson territory. But if you're going to score... Hell, he scored 80 points in a fucking game. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it, it, it's like if you're going to take that many shots, you're going to miss some. And if you're depending on, you know, if they're depending on you to make them, if they're depending on you to carry a team, I mean, Kobe, I, I have nothing bad to say about Kobe except for the fact that maybe he's a prick to play with. I mean, I don't know, but I mean, it's, it, it is what it is. Huh? Is there, yeah. <laughs> All right, what you got? I, I think... Kobe missed the most shots in NBA history. Okay. To that, I say whatever. Exactly. I'm Every, right there with you. Everybody on that list, the the, the uh, two the top 25. Most, most prolific shot missers were Carl Malone and Sean Havlicek. Yeah. If you have a problem with one of those two guys, like... Uh, Suck it. Yeah, I can't <laughs> help it. Um, and, you know, Brett Favre is throwing the most interceptions in NFL history. It's true. Like, yeah. do, you, do you have a problem with Brett Favre? Right, like, yeah. I can't help you. Um, kind of a kind of a bigger. His wife point. has a problem with him. He sends dick pics to to other <laughs> you know to, to reporters. Yeah, but other I, than that, I, I, like, I don't. <laughs> I don't have an opinion on that. Okay. Um, <laughs> but but back to Kobe. <laughs> no, like my my bigger problem is kind of like. The Lakers organization and kind of how they're, in my opinion, failing to handle this. We haven't we haven't done one of these in a while. But I, but I go back to a couple weeks ago when Jeannie Buss said that anybody that didn't want to play with Kobe was a loser. Yeah. And I mean like, whether or not you believe that or not is not for me to discuss or again have an opinion on. But. You can't say that. You can't. No, I even, agree. Even if you think it, like you certainly can't say it. Like you. you gotta and a lot of talking heads came out, and they're like, "Oh, good for Jeannie, sticking up for her, for for her her her, uh, her team and Kobe." And but no, I agree. I, I can't but argue with you. I think like, it's uh, it was amazing when she said beyond, that. Beyond beyond that, like, and probably the bigger point is you're gonna go and hire a guy in Byron Scott when there's. Any plethora of qualified NBA coaches, like ready to go, that that would do a, a great job leading the Lakers and could get them through a couple bad seasons with mm-hmm. a couple solid draft picks, and, and they could be right back on board with what they're uh, used to doing over over the long term. And what did they do instead of making that move? They let Phil Jackson and Derek Fisher skip town and go across country to the biggest media market in the NBA. And there's one point that I need to make that, that's just failed to mentor. Well, Fish about. couldn't have been the coach of the Lakers. No, maybe not, but I will. Fish couldn't have been the coach of the Lakers. I will say this. Der- Kobe Bryant's never won a ring without Derek I, Fisher. And that I know. Yeah, like, I get that. Never, never won a ring without him. And, and I just, I, I don't know. I, I, I think it's just. But you, see, you think Kobe would buy into whatever Fisher was selling to him as a coach? I mean, maybe not right away, but but I don't think I don't think it's about Kobe in that sense. Like, do, do you, I well, mean, Kobe it, thinks it's always about is, Kobe. Is he buying it? But what? But that's my that's my point. Like, who cares? Like, what 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 does that what does that get you? Like, do you think he's buying into Byron Scott? Like, my, I guess the bigger point is, how do you let Phil Jackson leave the Lakers? Well, like, or leave anywhere? Really? Leave anywhere? Yeah, yeah. Like. I was going to ask, where's Kurt Rambis? Uh, he, I think he's an assistant in New York, I think. Is that correct? Somebody, perhaps. Yeah. What's I'm, up? What's up? What do we got? I just think Kurt Rambis should come back. We got breaking news. Clayton Kershaw is the first National League pitcher to win the MVP and the Cy Young in the same oh. season. Wonderful. Since Bob Gibson <laughs> in 68. Yay, finally we get to talk some Dodgers as a fucking giant. <laughs> uh, 
I think uh, you guys have more GMs than you have shorts. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fine. They're loading up our front office. I don't give a shit. They got money to burn. You know, why, why not get a bunch of good minds behind uh, getting a, making a winning, winning season? You want to talk about Kershaw or college football before we get out of here? I think we're chasing everybody. Are we up against it? Let's. I want to talk. Well, we'll talk Kershaw soon. I, we, I just mentioned the Kershaw, obviously, whatever. But we need to call, talk this college football. Um, How do you like the this way, playoff system? Do what? How do you like this playoff system? Well... I like, I, I mean, I like the idea of it, but the way it's shaping up, you've got the SEC, which is, uh, you know, obviously there, there's no argument that it's the best conference in, in college sports. And uh, the NFC West is an absolute juggernaut. They, you know, uh, one top, the top five teams in the NFC West are all ranked in the top. NFC West. What did I say? NFC. Oh. <laughs> I go. I got uh, Saints on the mind, too. Uh, in the SEC West. That's a problem. Yeah, well. Um, or, or, or ranked in the top 20. And it's the fact that this new college system, this, this new playoff system is going to be the, the top four teams. And there might, there's the potential that an SEC team will not be represented in this college playoff uh, format in order to play for the national championship game. That sounds ridiculous. It's because it, it's quite possible. How does that make you feel? It's quite possible that every SEC team, because they're just beating the shit out of each other, will finish with two losses. At least the top the top three teams yeah, in the SEC will pro- possibly. If Alabama beats uh, Mississippi State on Saturday, if Alabama beats Mississippi State, then it's quite possible every team is going to finish with two losses. My question is, and why, they're not going to be in the top four. Why didn't the NCAA just come up with a tournament system similar to the basketball tournament and have 64 teams just I think bra- because bracket it out it, and fucking go? It, can, I, can I answer that? No. Okay. The the main majority part of the reason of that, or 32, or whatever. It, uh, right. Why why they didn't expand the playoffs? Yeah. The reason they didn't expand the playoffs is simply this. The, the power conference teams, and the, like all of them, not just the SEC, but the Big Ten and the Pac-12 and, and all of them across the board, like to play three cupcake games at the beginning of every season. Okay. And what that does is that elongates the season and it takes away their playoff time. They would rather rack up wins then play within their conference, Lame. and they've created well, the problem that they now have. No, now, no this, hold on, may, stop. May I, hold, real quick, no, what? May, may I just keep going for a second? Okay. The, this problem, which is self-induced, um, let's, let's realize... You realize that, these teams, that, that the, the, these automatic wins that come in, or, or they go to, or whatever, and, and all across football. Everyone, everyone says the SEC is, like, is renowned for that, but every, every yeah, college do. team I does it. That. All that. the juggernauts do it. Um, you realize that the programs that play the, the, these juggernauts, they push extremely hard for those games. Even yeah, they if, need even the if money. they're going to get blown out by 60-plus points. Yeah, they, they need the money. It's, it's a $2.5 million guarantee exactly, for exactly. each of those small teams. So and that's exactly you what can't deny them that law. You, I mean, you can't. I mean, like, wh- whenever they're pushing that hard for it, you can't deny them that. No, 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 no. Look, I, I, I understand what's going on here. Now, I, I want to just make a point real quick. It's November 13th. College football and the entire everything about college football for the last as long as I've been alive yep. has been about pontificating and making bullshit predictions and complaining when your team gets left out and the like. And in order to eliminate that and have a legit champion for like the first time ever, they've made a playoff system. And I love that. And, I, I, and I, I think that that's rap. I think it's and made not, everybody happy as well. That there is a playoff system. And I'm not trying to I think it should be more teams. Like, maybe it's not perfect. Uh, And, like, maybe they will add more teams. But you got to realize something. That system was not put in place to make the best playoff possible. It was simply put in place to determine a national champion, which is something that has never been legitimately had in college football. And they put a qualified group of people 
uh, in all walks of life on that committee. And if you go back and you look at the NCAA basketball, the one thing that I've realized is the big schools like Kentucky or UCLA and the like, if there's ever a question of if a, a big team, a known team, should get into something over a small team, they always go with the brand because they need people to watch it. So if a team like Alabama or Auburn or one of those teams... They go with the brand, but they also, they also go with uh, the, the strength of schedule, for God's sakes. Right, Especially right. in basketball. If, no, if, if you've got a powerhouse that has six losses against a team that ran the whack, you know, and they got a lo one loss in the whack, the, the powerhouse with well maybe with five or six losses is is, is yeah. going to advance over the over the exactly. wax team. Exactly, and that and that was just simply my my point is like number one, it's November thirteenth or whatever the fuck the date is. Like we have two more weeks of college football to figure out, and I I firmly believe that if there's an SEC power within shouting distance of that playoff, they're gonna get in because they need those ratings from Alabama or Auburn or Mississippi State or whatever team it might be because they, they just they need that. Like that's that's what the NCAA does. So I, I think it's much to do about nothing but like with the but, same thing that I know that this no. is this is the first run through of the playoff. It is and, they, and like they probably will alter it in one way or another. If Mississippi State beats Alabama, then it'll be a moot point because if Mississippi State beats Alabama then they're going to run to the table with a potential, with a, 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 a one more potential of a loss. And if they lose one, then they're still going to be in the, in the top four. But if Alabama beats Mississippi State and Alabama loses in the Iron Bowl against, uh, to Auburn, which is very possible, all I'm saying is if there's not an SEC, if there's not even an SEC team that's eligible to play for the national championship game, Whenever, it, it, then you got to look at how your conference is constructed. No, you got to look. You got to look at the system that's th that that they're playing for. See, like, you have to look. You have to like there. And as soon as they came out, what last year, two years, last year, two years ago, and said that we're going to implement a playoff system in 2014 um, of four teams, everyone was excited. But they're like. Four teams that is just you, you can't really establish anything on four teams. Then then take out take out one week of your cupcake games and make it eight. Fuck it, take out all three and make it thirty two. There you go. I'm with Sometimes it. it's more than three. It's yeah, whatever. whatever. You know what I mean? Like same difference. But I say like, go to sixty four and carve out six weeks for a fucking playoff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it could happen. There's ways to do it. Could it could do absolutely. And, and I, think, I think it might go into that. But you got to realize something. This whole shit was not about making a college football playoff. It's about determining a champion. And if you can't get to the point where you can sniff a four-team playoff, you really got to look at realigning your league. And, like, nobody was having this problem two weeks ago when there were three teams from the SEC in that playoff. No one had a problem then. But... Well, Whatever. It, it, it's not that, it, it, Joe, it's not that anybody has a problem with the playoff. It's just the, and everyone from the begin, from the start of the season, when they saw how good all of the SEC, the entire SEC was, knew that this was going to be an issue. I knew it was going to be an issue. I mean, and if I knew it was going to be an issue, I, I'm pretty sure all the experts that talk about the SEC every day, and that's their life as the SEC, saw it as a potential problem. There's... You can take Alabama, Auburn, Mississippi State, hell, LSU. You can put LSU in there. You can put shit, you can put the Gators in that category this year. This year, our defense is one of the top in the country, for God's sakes. Our offense is weak. But any of the four, like, if no SEC team makes it into the Final Four, take any of those teams. And they can, no. at any given day, beat be one yeah. of those four teams. Then, then you got to look at it. And I, I get it. Like, and it's not a perfect situation. I, I, I'm, not, we, I'm not trying to argue that it is. I understand what you're saying. I just think it's better than it was. And quite frankly, it is I, better than it was. I agree I with you. I like the 14 playoff. Right. So, so, Joe, do you think that uh, this 14 playoff is p potentially a, a political maneuver to sort of break up the conference monopolies that have dominated college sports in general? I, I think at least, it, at least I th football. I think it's going to be to to create new conference monopolies, and then you're going to see a, a change in the structure of ultimately how the teams are 
are selected for the playoffs. That's a that's a very interesting. Bit. Well, what's our time look like? I don't know. Uh, we're at thirty-eight I think, minutes. I think we're pretty close. I I, no, I think I've said minutes. all I needed to say. I just want to go ahead and close the show by saying congratulations to Clayton Kershaw. I'll take bum over everything. I was going to say, I don't, I don't, and, I don't need uh, your, your sarcastic, snide fucking... No, uh, like, I, congratulations. The man. guy had a great season. Yeah, he had, he had, three, he had a great Cy career. Three Cy Youngs out of four years, man. man. He's three a, Cy Youngs in five years, back-to-back-to-back-to-back to back to back to back ERA titles. Uh, he, he, he's, he's considered one of the game. best pitchers of all time. He's, um, a, he's a great pitcher. And he's 26 I, years and old. I don't know very many. I don't know very many athletes or very many people in any profession that that work harder than the guy. And I, he's I've, gonna get his I've in never, October. I'm not worried I've about that. I've never heard him. I've never heard him give a bad interview or say anything negative about anything. I I don't have anything bad to say about the guy. And I think he's great. And congratulations on his award. I really think he's just fucking with me, Jared. I, I, I don't. I don't think. Uh, I think he's. I don't know. He's trying but to, thank yeah, you. That's yeah. To, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, Kirsch would love to hear you say that. Getting your I don't think down. he cares. <laughs> man. He like, you know what I mean? I don't know. Congratulations, Clayton Kershaw and Dodgers. We're, Kershaw is going to get his in October. I'm not worried about that at all. It's hey, gonna we, be, we're going to get the odd years, goddamn. And I'm going to win 100 bucks from Joe, possibly it's, next year. It's not only 96 after. days until the start of spring training. People. Oh, I know, baby. Jeez. I know. What Trust me. I was counting the days after the Dodgers got eliminated. I was like, well, baseball, no one gives a shit about these other teams that are in here. So baseball starts back up. And <laughs> all, right. all right, well, here's the deal. I got a piece, so tell everybody where they can find us. <laughs> All right, everybody. Spearfandom.com. All you, uh, well, the four of you at the bar, they're not even listening. You, Fuck you should drink Sino tequila. Drink Sino tequila. It's $4 shots of Sino and Jameson. Yeah, you heard that, huh? <laughs> yeah, right? It's Nate and Joe show. $4 shots. Tell Oscar. We're on YouTube. Four dollar shots of Cena Tequila, six dollar shots of Jameson. Follow us on YouTube, our YouTube channel, Superior Fandom. We're on uh, Facebook, Superior Fandom, and go to our website, SuperiorFandom.com. We're on Twitter, Superior Fandom. Twitter, we're on, Twitter, we're on, yeah. We're on we, Instagram, Superior we, Fandom. I don't know if we, we Instagram shit, we tweet shit. All right, we're out.